We're making a zine. This is our second shoot, our second photo outing of this Making a Zine project. And today's brief, today's mission is to photograph the falls in the upper part of the park. Imagine I won't do a lot of talking while I make those photos because it's going to be pretty loud down there. You can probably hear it as we approach now. It's pretty simple. Today I'm looking for a possible cover shot for this zine. I'm gonna shoot vertically and explore the idea of possibly a wraparound type cover. So I need to make sure the uh, waterfall is on the right hand side of the, of the frame. If you're new to this uh, series, this is episode two. This is where I'm taking the summer to photograph enough material at this park in the foothills of the Cascade Mountains to uh, put together a zine. Then after we're done making the photographs, we're going to do some editing and picking out the images, and then we're going to print it. We'll probably print it sometime in the fall or early winter. Today we've got some overcast, so I really wanted to get down here as quick as possible before this burns off. This uh, specific waterfall gets pretty dark if there aren't clouds to kind of soften the light down there. Although the waterfalls are really what attract people to this park. Wait a second. For me, the waterfalls aren't the main attraction. It's really the ecosystem around this creek. But it would be silly of me to not recognize that the waterfalls do add a, a really nice graphic element to the uh, photographs I'm, I'm going to want to get. Right now the creek is running at a pretty good rate. There's still quite a bit of water because it's still pretty early in the season. So right now I'm just kind of making it a priority to, to photograph the waterfalls and make sure that I've got at least one shot of them with a good amount of water going through them.
I saw a lot of, uh, I don't know if you can hear me, I'm trying to use the rock to block some of the sound, but I saw a lot of frames on this waterfall. I got some fairly close, and I dropped down to another shelf and tried a couple with the waterfall further back, a little more foreground um, interest. I also shot quite a few with the waterfall on the right hand side. I composed a lot of them a little different than I normally would for just a standalone photograph because I'm, I'm thinking if this is going to be a, a cover shot, I'm going to want a little headroom, a little room on top for the title, for the text. We'll see. I also did a stack with a 50 millimeter lens. I'm not really sure how that's going to work. I've been wanting to try to see if I could stitch some 35 millimeter film together. So I experiment a little bit with this waterfall. I have a feeling this uh, 20 millimeter is going to be what I use for this waterfall. I'm going to move to another place in the park and I'll, I'll go into why I'm doing that here in a minute. But I want to get away from this waterfall because it's kind of loud. If this content isn't enough for you and you want to see some more photography content, I've started uploading videos to my personal channel, uh, mostly photography content. It's a little less formal. But it might be something you might be interested in. I'll leave a link in the description if, uh, if you want to check it out. And if you want to help support this channel, I also have a patron page. You can become a patron team member. Well, I guess I should say what film I'm using. Today's film is Delta 100. And I've got that in my Nikon F5. And that last shot of the waterfall was with a 20 millimeter. Now, I'm on my way to reshoot a waterfall I shot last time when I was out here. I, I had no, no problem with the composition last time. It was a good shot. I liked it. Unfortunately, I used a lens that seems to be something wrong with it. The, edge, the edges are a lot softer than they should be. And I didn't leave enough headroom on that shot. And I'm just not happy with how much... Uh, softness there is at the top part of that frame so since I've got a nice overcast day I'm gonna go ahead and re reshoot that waterfall I'll just have to use a different lens and maybe crop it or something I, I don't know the lens I used last time was a 24 right now I've got with me is a 20 and a 50 50 might be too tight 20 is probably gonna be too loose so I'll probably have to crop the 20 or stitch a few of the uh, 50 together. We'll see. That's why I'm going back to re-photograph the uh, waterfall that I took last week. It just, it's just nagging me that I, that that waterfall isn't quite right. Well, I ended up shooting a whole roll of 24, not, long, not a lot of frames, on just two waterfalls. That's really the only thing I have time for today. The beauty of this uh, location is I can pop out here for a couple hours and, and uh, get a few shots and then come back a couple days later. It's uh, kind of awesome. I really don't think I'm going to load up another roll for today. I accomplished what I came out here for as long as uh, they turn out. <laughs> Otherwise I'll be back out here in a couple days. My approach to this project is a little bit more methodical than I typically am. 
I'm focusing on the literal stuff, the the uh, the waterfalls first, just to make sure I have them. So then I can focus more on the subtle, less uh, uh, obvious photos as I uh, as the summer goes on. There's one more waterfall that I haven't photographed. I really don't much care for that waterfall. I'll get a shot of it at some point. It's not a priority. But I've been focusing mostly on the three waterfalls that I find the most interesting. And really, to be truthful, they're the ones that most people come to see. I have one more thing I'd like to talk about while I'm out here. I'd like to address. It's something that I hadn't thought much about before actually deciding to do this project. And a couple comments this week really got me thinking. And so I, so I think I'll address that right now. I know some have expressed interest in more details of the park itself. I mean, I don't really know that much about it as far as geologically and uh, the uh, biodiversity. <laughs> it's a little out of my... Uh, my wheelhouse and I have said where I am to be fair I didn't think it would be fair to, to at least not mention the location at least once but something that little bothers me a little bit about other YouTube channels and I don't really want to be the same person is I don't really want to approach this project as an essay on this specific park. I'm really more interested in the artistic impression I can get from this type of ecosystem. There really isn't anything all that unique or special about this park other than it's a park. There are a bunch of these kind of creeks in Western Oregon, in the Cascade Mountains. We're just here in the foothills of the Cascades. Outside this park, there's logging, farms, It's, it's really not that unique of an ecosystem. But what I, what I like about it is it's, there's a lot of easy access, good access to life along the creek. Now, I'm more interested in the creek and, the, uh, and what I can do with the uh, um, elements around it. I really don't want to focus this or make this about any specific place, but more about a specific ecosystem. What kind of art can we find in this uh, type of area? We've got a lot of broadleaf trees. We also have fir trees, lots of foliage, lots of uh, undergrowth. It's just a really good subject matter for a project, for photographs. The last thing I want to do is bring more traffic here. Since I started coming here probably 30 years ago, most of the time I was the only person out here. This park has become quite popular, especially the last couple of years. The trails are, are definitely a lot more worn. And I, I think it's, it, the park can handle it because most of what people look at are right off the trail. They don't need to uh, bushwhack or anything to to uh, see stuff, to photograph stuff. The park is pretty well maintained. So I, I think you can handle the traffic, but I don't want to be the one that causes more traffic to come here. So I'm just calling it the park, the creek, in general terms. I just don't want to be the one that causes more people to come. <laughs> it's a great little park, but it's just a little park. It's not, a, it's, it's not one of the big attractions in the state. Because a lot of people, you know, come here for quiet, peaceful walks, and if it gets too crowded, it, it kind of takes away from that. I know a couple big-name YouTube channels that have gone to my favorite beach on the Oregon coast. And for years, I was most of the time the only one there. But they go there, and they say right where they're at for the whole world to see. And now every time I go there, it's just crawling with photographers. I don't, I don't want to be that... <laughs> that channel. I know I have hardly anybody that watches my stuff. 
So even if I did say where I'm at in every video, I doubt it would have much of an impact. I just wanted to get that off my chest and hopefully it doesn't irritate somebody or make you mad. But I think it's something that more YouTubers should be doing. Not everything has to be said and, and not, not everything has to be shared. <laughs> you, know, you, you can find your own special place. Well, we're just about back to the car. So we're going to end today's video right here. I know I don't have a lot to show for it for my work today, but I've only been here a couple hours. This is only episode two. There's going to be a lot more photography to be done out here. So until next time, thanks for coming along for the ride.